All right, welcome back everybody. We're going to continue on with our lecture on chondrichthys. Now we're going to talk about a group of fish called chimera, and chimera are commonly called rabbit fish or rat fish, and this is what they look like. They're mostly a deep sea organism found in the Pacific Northwest, and they're occasionally seen by uh, night divers. And their name chimera is interesting because uh, in Greek mythology, a chimera is an, is an animal, a fire-breathing, dragon-like animal made out of multiple parts, like a lion and part dragon. And the word chimera in humans is a term used when a human occasionally will have more than one set of DNA, more than one person's DNA, which happens sometimes when a pregnancy uh, does not go properly in twins and perhaps one of them gets implanted inside another individual and they call that a chimera. These animals, their name kind of implies being multiple animals and they do look kind of unusual. Uh, they are, like I said, mostly deep sea. They have venom in their dorsal fin, but it's more like a sting, so it can't really hurt you. And they have plate-like mineralized non-replaceable teeth and that's quite different than sharks, as we'll see. And they have this neat egg case that people, divers, occasionally find and think they found, you know, some kind of inanimate object, like it's someone's comb or something like that. All right, also in the chondrichthys, we have what you're probably familiar with, skates and rays. And you probably heard of a stingray before. And skates and rays are, are both similar dorsally flattened fish, meaning rather than being compressed from the side, they are flattened dorsal ventrally, and many of them are kind of bottom dwelling fish, but not all of them. And the chondrichthys, uh, skates, and rays are a little bit different in that the skates cannot sting you. They are oviparous, if you remember back before when we were talking about shark reproduction. They tend to be on the smaller side, and they have a pelvic fin that has two lobes, whereas the rays can sting. However, not all of them, as I'll show you in a minute, and they are oviviparous, they give live birth, and they tend to be larger, and they have a single lobe on their pelvic fin. And the skates have this really neat, um, because they're oviparous, they lay this egg case, and it's often called a mermaid's purse. This is what it looks like, and that object actually has the sharks developing on the inside of it. I mentioned rays that not all of them can sting. For example, right off our coast, you can catch in the surf uh, this shovel nose guitar fish here. This is a type of ray. It's a chondrichthys in the ray group, but it can't sting you. And then the larger manta ray, the manta ray is a very large filter feeding ray related to things like stingrays, but it cannot harm you again. All right, so moving on, a little bit about sharks. When people talk about sharks, there's several topics that come up. And one of those I think that's important is let's talk about the tremendous fear over sharks. Um, it is a common animal that a lot of people are afraid of. And there's a significant media bias, I'm quite sure. So one of the things about media bias is that different media outlets, of course, are trying to get people to listen. Individual stories on each shark bite, pretty much, if there's about 10 per year, which there are, pretty much every one of those makes it into the local news or media outlets. In other words, we are aware of every time a person gets killed by a shark, for the most part. Um, apparently around 150 people die every year from coconuts falling on their head. That's actually from the University of Florida. And I don't know how they get that number, but it's probably somewhat accurate. But car accidents, 38,000 people die every year in car accidents just in the US. You can get that data by going to the CDC's uh, National Center for Health Statistics, where all the collective data on how many people died in the different categories of how they can break that down. and that is probably, to me, that's probably some of the best and most accurate data because there's a lot of people watching it. If you look in this example up above, uh, I was looking up how many people get killed by dogs. The number is actually, you know, reasonably high. Just in the United States, there's, you know, 30 or 40. And then look at this statistic here, 38% of the fatality victims, 38% of fatality victims 
where adults age eight years or younger. And then next bullet point, 62% of fatality victims were adults, 21 years. This is a lawyer's website and there's a particular lawyer, I guess, that, you know, does some kind of um, um, bodily harm law. But anyway, first of all, you've got adults age eight and younger and adults age 21. Obviously, the, that word is wrong. So that's weird that adults in there twice. But look at this, 38 and 62, you add those up, what do you get? You get 100%. So eight and younger and 21 and up, does that mean there is nobody that's between the age of nine and 20, there's something not right. Just to show you that the data gets even accidentally reported wrong. You have to always be sort of careful at information that's coming at you that is sometimes purposely given to you wrong. But a lot of times I think it's just an accident. I think someone messed up and, and I catch it all the time. And here happens to be one here on a lawyer's website. So I don't think they intentionally did that. I think they had one set of data and they just subtracted from hundred to get the other. My, my point of this is that although sharks do kill people, great white sharks have killed around 57 people, tiger sharks, 36, bull sharks, 26. Those are the top three and that's total number of deaths in history of those animals. And again, most of that makes the news. Whereas in the United States, 38,000 people are dying in car accidents. They don't put that usually on the news, at least in that frequency. There's always that media bias and public bias. So are, are sharks dangerous? Um, everything's somewhat dangerous, including coconuts, but you have to put that into perspective uh, in terms of you know, what's actually dangerous. Now we're gonna talk specifically about sharks themselves. Sharks have two dorsal fins and an anal fin. They have five gill openings in general on the side of the animal for respiration. They have this really interesting membrane by their eye called a nictating membrane. You can see it in this picture here. That protects the shark's eyes when it's biting into uh, a seal or whatever it's attacking. So most chondroichthys have a very um, distinctive caudal fin. It's called a heterocercal caudal fin. And typically what that means is in the heterocercal caudal fin, the top of the fin is, is much larger and longer than the bottom of the fin, giving it a very characteristic look that you see in nearly all sharks. And there are a bunch of different sharks. And I know that we're going to, for PLC number three, I know you're going to all be uh, giving us some great information on sharks. So I don't want to, you know, steal your thunder, if you will. So I'm just going to mention a couple of different sharks and give you an idea uh, of some features of them. So first, that we have the great white shark, which is 20 feet long or so, and around 4,000 to up to 5,000 pounds. Um, to put that into perspective, my Subaru Outback uh, this is not my actual Subaru Outback, but I have a Subaru Outback. That car, I just looked it up to see, that car weighs 3,700 pounds. So imagine that you're out swimming or whatever, or you're a seal and you're swimming to shore and you get hit by something in the ocean that can move 15, 16 miles an hour, which is fast in the water, that is bigger than like your average size car or so by quite a bit or could be. Um, so that's a big predator. On the other end of that is the very uh, incredibly large um, whale shark. And the whale shark gets up to 40 feet and they have trouble actually measuring these. So they might even be bigger and up to 47,000 pounds. This is the largest shark. And in fact, this is the largest fish in the world and one of the largest animals uh, in the world. There's um, there's a blue whale and a couple of the other whales are bigger, but for the most part, this tends to be one of the largest animals uh, in the world, but not the largest. Definitely the largest fish at 40 feet, 47,000 pounds. They're harmless uh, to people unless, you know, it rolled out of a truck on you or that kind of thing. But for the most part, there you go. Okay, that concludes lecture 5.1b. Hope everyone's having a great day and I will see you soon.